aboard a Navy ship steaming toward Eniwetok Atoll in November 1952, a handful of men share a secret which can shape the fate of the world. On a tiny island named Ilujalab, the Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Department are preparing to explode the world's most fearsome weapon, the first hydrogen bomb. The building which houses the device, nicknamed Mike, is called the Cab. The island of Ilujalab itself is referred to as the Shot Island. Built to collect scientific data, a plywood tube looking like boxwood cars runs two miles to a detection station on Bogan Island. Operation Ivy, code name for the H-bomb test, is under a joint task force. Four groups are aboard its ships, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Scientific. A weather briefing is held as each hour nears, for weather conditions can make or break the test shot. General Clarkson, task force commander, General Walk, the chief of staff, and Dr. Alvin Graves, scientific deputy, question the weather officers. Any chance of showers? Not within the next 48 hours or with the entire marshals. How about cloud cover? The acute cumulus move in, but if we go off on schedule, there's nothing to bother the operation. In less than a minute, the first hydrogen bomb ever set off on Earth will explode before your very eyes. Minus 15 seconds. Minus 10 seconds. Niner, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, teaser. Watch the shock wave as it rolls toward the flagship. And remember, these are carefully edited scenes, the non-secret portion of a top-secret Defense Department film. Newer and more powerful hydrogen bomb tests have been carried out. Helicopters whirling away to study the test island must get in and out quickly. Radioactive dust will begin showering the atoll in an hour. Approaching the blast center, aerial observers spot the detection station on Bogon, apparently in good shape, but there is no trace of the plywood tube. And all the islands surrounding Alujalab seem to be swept clean. Alujalab is gone. Nothing there but what seems to be a deep crater and water dark blue in color. Nothing but water, an island completely erased. Mike was power, the kind of titanic energy released by stars. Let's go back and watch Mike in action again. Five, four, three. Fireball more than three miles across. Compared to New York's skyline at bottom, this means that with the Empire State Building as the zero point, the Mike Fireball would extend from Washington Square to Central Park. Its searing flash would envelop one quarter of the island of Manhattan in the twinkling of an eye. The tremendous upsurge of air from the detonation rapidly pushes up the Mike cloud. Again, nothing of this height and width has ever before been witnessed. If the picture is stopped at this point in the cloud's growth, the height of the cloud is approximately 40,000 feet. This means that 32 Empire State Buildings at 1,250 feet each could be piled one on top of the other before they would reach the cloud's altitude at this time, roughly two minutes after zero. Some 10 minutes later, the cloud approaches its maximum. The mushroom portion of the deadly radioactive air mass has pushed up to around 10 miles and spreads out along the base of the stratosphere to the width of about 100 miles. The stem itself is snaking upward to a height of about 25 miles. The crater is roughly a mile in diameter. When it is illustrated that some 14 Pentagon buildings can be comfortably accommodated in the hole, the size of the Mike crater becomes an awesome reality. In profile, it reaches a depth of 175 feet, the height of a 17-story building. Everything within a radius of three miles is completely annihilated. 
Severe to moderate damage is recorded out to seven miles. The lateral destructive effects are the greatest achieved by a single explosive device. Light damage extends as far as 10 miles. But let's relate this area of damage to a city like Washington, D.C. With the capital as zero point, there would be complete annihilation west to Arlington Cemetery, east to the Anacostia River, north to the soldiers' home, and south to Bowling Field, complete, utter, absolute annihilation. With this mushroom cloud, mankind enters the hydrogen bomb age, an era in which every one of us must share the fateful decision to create or destroy.